Freestyle. The most commonly used technique in Australia and unfortunately quite often because it is the technique used for most swimmers it is the least perfect technique of all our techniques. In other words it's used for most swimming training or swimming practice and therefore develops the greatest amount of faults. However freestyle practiced well and learnt well must be reinforced with a nice high body position, continuous arm movements, a steady head position looking forward, continuous kick and a nice streamlined position. Side lateral kick, side lateral kicking and sculling, arms folded kick, torpedo kick are all skills that even the young learner can develop and enhance. Side lateral kick using a kickboard, concentrating on rolling of the head to breathe, not lifting. One of the common faults in freestyle is the lift of the head rather than the roll of the head. The head should be rotated to the side, one eye, one ear in the water, and to bring their chin to their shoulder, look down at the bottom. Constant kicking. Always reassure the swimmer that they should have a harder kick, a faster kick, when they turn to breathe. Trying to eliminate any crossover kicking position or hesitation in the kick when the athlete turns to breathe. They must always breathe to their non-streamlined arm. Side lateral kick with a hand in the pocket position. This promotes a high elbow position on the recovery. It's important in freestyle that we have a high elbow and an elbow led recovery, not a hand led recovery. Quite often with an overemphasis on the chicken wing position where the hand is dragged along the top of the water and brought in too close to the armpit, we promote a dropped elbow on the recovery. Here we see the swimmer practicing high elbow recovery and down while maintaining good body position. It's important that after you breathe, you don't duck your head down to the bottom. It returns to a position on the surface. Arms folded kick. This of course is the most difficult of all the kicks and can be practiced with a snorkel so the head position can be kept down or it can be a breathing up in front on knee position. Torpedo kick with hip rotation. This is making sure that the hip rotates first followed by the trunk, not the trunk rotating and then followed by the hip. Important facts to learn in freestyle are side lateral kick when breathing. In other words, when the athlete turns to breathe, and I said turn, not lift the head, that a continuous kicking takes place. One eye, one ear in the water. The kick is slightly harder when breathing than it is normally. That there's a continual blowout hard at the end of the pool. And this is always an area of concern with young children who tend to hold their breath and try and breathe out and in when they roll their head to the side. It's important for efficient, continuous, over distance type swims that the athlete has great breathing patterns. The pull or the line of application of force should start with a little rotation, a high wrist of the little finger down, pulling back fingers first with a high wrist position as though they're pulling their fingers back first before their wrist or their elbow and then concentrating coming past their nose, belly button and accelerating through their side. High elbow lead recovery with the entry into the water of the fingertips, wrist, elbow, shoulder press. I like breathing every four on the way down and breathing every four on the way back, but breathing to the one side of the pool. That would be breathing on the right on the way down and left on the way back. This allows the swimmer to look at the teacher or the coach conducting the class. And freestyle torpedo kick the athlete should look to more towards the bottom of the pool than at the other end of the pool, or should look at the corner of the pool, that is the bottom corner of the pool, slightly forward but also slightly downwards. Kicking with a board is very important. Side lateral kick with a board, ensuring that the breathing pattern is one eye, one ear in the water. A breath in is taken, not a breath out, then a breath in is taken on the recovery position of the head. The pull through the nose, belly button side, then breathe, a high elbow and an elbow led recovery 
in preference to a hand lead recovery, a gentle entry into the water at shoulder width, pulling through that center line, a high elbow and an elbow lead recovery. In developing good freestyle technique or backstroke technique, the body position is crucial to the reduction of resistance through the water. To facilitate reduced resistance, it's important that the swimmer has great body position and learns trunk rotation without, using, without the use of the arms to develop good rotation through the water. In this area, we're going to teach a drill which is called sh hip, shoulder, chin. We ask the swimmer to stand perfectly still and have the hands clasped gently by the side with the thumb forward and the little finger back. And in the backstroke position it will be hip, shoulder, chin in that position. And then rotate quickly through to the other side. If it's backstroke, the swimmer will be looking at the roof of the pool or the sky. If it's freestyle, the swimmer will be looking at the bottom. In freestyle, they will breathe on need. So I'll ask Clementine to show us one more. Hip, shoulder, chin. Rotating the hip first to facilitate full trunk rotation. Back again, quickly through the rotation cycle. So the body is facing either side of the pool, either to the right of the pool or to the left of the pool. In this position here now, Clementine has a choice to swim through the water with the maximum amount of resistance, which would be this, water displacement, with an entry position, which would be a high elbow, flat wrist, and she would have this much reach, but only using her shoulders to drive her forward. If we can convince Clementine to swim with trunk rotation and pushing the hips forward, she has greater reach and can use all her back muscles, all her shoulder muscles, and all her chest muscles. And it means that she will have a much reduced resistance. So it's a matter of creating the greatest application of force against the water for speed, production of speed, and reducing resistance to create efficiency in the stroke. So it's our intention to have Clementine swim with the maximum amount of application of force against the water with the minimum resistance through the water. And that means trunk rotation. It also means in freestyle that you have inward shoulder rotation with the socket of the elbow facing more towards the bottom than the sky. In this position, this would be incorrect where the socket of the elbow is facing up, even in that position there, we would want to have the socket of the elbow facing down, getting inward rotation of the shoulder joint and opening up a flat position here so that all of the forearm can pull back in a centered force application towards the body. Also remember, in any lesson it's important to have fun. Playing games with the swimmers is an important element of learning so that they wish to come and learn. Introduction to competition fun, team-based skills, team relays, best dive, least number of strokes, partner kicking, timed kick swims, and so on. One-arm catch-up is an ideal way of promoting maximum hip rotation, continuous arm movement, and making sure that there's acceleration through the water. It can be done with the hand by the side, or with the hand torpedoed out in front. The breathing can be done as well, on need, to the opposite side. I much prefer one arm catch up than to double arm catch up. My pet hate in swimming is double arm catch up. I think it promotes shortness of stroke and it promotes lack of hip rotation, especially for young swimmers. Shark fin drill and here we see the elbow lead recovery not a hand lead recovery. The elbow is lifted towards the roof, semicircle of the hand, dragging fingertips along the top of the water. Continuous kick, maintaining maximum trunk rotation, high head position, low relaxed hand, the hand entry into the water level with the shoulder in a no splash situation. High elbow, 
semicircle, drag the fingertips along the water, no splash entry, and good trunk rotation. The sculling out in front is maximising the feel of the water with a high wrist and pulling in that slight S bend and concentrating on pulling through the centre of gravity under the body. Freestyle is the most efficient of all the four strokes because it has continuous arm movement and application of force on the water for the longest period of time, also for the longest period of time through the centre of gravity. Also it can create minimum resistance with that concentrated trunk rotation. Notice the high head position when the athlete takes a breath, they do not duck their head back under the water or drop their head too much. Continuous kick. These drills can be practiced with fins and without fins and can be learnt and taught at the introductory level so that the swimming skill is linked to the full stroke. Here we see freestyle hip rotator with half recovery, hand in the pocket. Notice the continual hip movement. The hips do not face the bottom of the pool at any stage. They face one side then the other. High elbow, recover. High elbow down. Make sure there's an elbow led recovery. In the learn to swim or the introductory sessions, combining kick and swim and swim and kick is very important. The progression is of course to do kick down, swim back. This is where you have 50% of the lesson in kick and 50% of the lesson in swim. So the athlete can develop this. You perhaps learn with two lengths kick, one length swim. Then one length kick and one length swim and then perhaps two lengths swim and one length kick. Here we see an athlete or a young pupil not breathing out under the water. So the kick swim combination makes sure that the athlete has to work hard in their kick, continuous kicking followed by a swim routine. The athlete is holding the board at shoulder entry, fingertips on the top, thumbs on the bottom. This has to be changed as it will promote a drop wrist position as the athlete releases the board to take the next stroke. And it must be developed to go thumb on top, fingertips on the bottom as you can see here. In that introductory squat it's important to reinforce kick because kick is gradually reduced throughout the learning situation as butterfly backstroke and breaststroke are introduced as new skills into the learning format. But the kick-swim combination, I think, is a very, very important safety measure so that the athletes are not running into each other. They're learning to circle the lane, kick down on the right-hand side and swim back on the left. The same applies to backstroke and you see a good position of the, the hands holding the board here, nice high position, nice head position, continuous fast arms and kicks, toes tipping the surface on the kick. Making sure the athlete, if they're not learning in a 50 metre pool, is not holding their breath. Here we see learning breaststroke or inverted backstroke. And the important thing is that you can combine the strokes back breast, breast free, or you can go kick swim in any of those combinations. But make sure that you slowly introduce extended swimming opportunities with petitioned kick opportunities. I think the best way is to start doing kick two, swim one, then kick one, swim one, then kick one, swim two. You can also practice backstroke down, breaststroke back. In this pattern, you're making sure you have equal exposure for the athlete to all given strokes. Also a safety measure, the breaststroke people coming this way do not bang in or run into the people doing backstroke the other way and it's an ideal way of learning how to circle the lanes. You can practice breaststroke down, freestyle back. This is also very good because it enhances the medley. It is believed that the most important event in a young swimmer's life is the 12 year old 200 medley. This promotes efficient technique over 200 meters in all four strokes.